How do you do, fellow kids? My name is Eric. I'm going to do some corridor modeling today for you, specifically around uh, BeamGuard, the transition from BeamGuard out to a normal roadway, and all kinds of situations that you might run into it. Uh, for this presentation, I've got three different audiences in mind. One is somebody who's actually going to be doing BeamGuard on a WizDot project. You should be watching this. Next one is uh, somebody who's doing a WizDot project that may not be doing BeamGuard, but may not be totally up to speed with our subs and our customizations. You should be watching this and using tools that I'm using to make your job easier. And the last one is those of you who haven't seen or maybe aren't using our customization package. What I want you to think about is how you would do the things that I'm doing with the tools set that you have. Maybe consider using our package or developing some tools that do similar things that our package does. Without further ado, let's get into the modeling. I'm going to be dropping you into a corridor file that I have uh, data referenced the station alignments for this area, some edge line alignments that are, are, have, I've already developed with some uh, side of the road geometry, and of course the design profile and the existing surface that we can do some modeling cross sections on. So let's get going. One more thing before I get to the assemblies, I'm gonna add my control profiles. Now this is specific to WizDot subassemblies and it's super, super powerful. It is being able to control variables such as slope or width or height or any of the things that you can't directly target out of Civil 3D. Being able to target those variables uh, through what we call control profiles. They're, they're technically profile objects, but they're not absolute elevation profiles are just something to control something else in the corridor. Now, given that, I know I'm going to just have the one corridor, so I'm going to put those profiles, attach them to Highway 25 here with my uh, in, in this file. If I knew I was going to set up for multiple corridors, I might put them up in alignment profile and manage them there. The trick there is I got to go back and do the edits there and sync and, and rebuild and save all the time. Having these profiles in my corridor file allows me to be able to edit them and rebuild immediately without all the save and syncs. So I'm going to do that right now. I'll go back to my prospector tab. I'm going to open up alignments, Highway 25, just to show you what happens here. So we've got the 25 prop uh, for proposed, and I'm going to go to is.design profile off of the, what am I on? Design panel, profile, pull down, control profile, editor. We're going to spend a little bit of time in this later on, but right now I'm just going to create. So I'm going to create for alignment 25. A ZCP is just something that's going to slam it down to the bottom, control profiles, but we're going to do multiple. We're going to use the WizDot default. I'm going to view the default just to see what it's doing, okay? You can do this too. So if I take a look at this, what we're going to do is we're going to put the highway, the baseline, at the beginning, and we're going to put a dash, and then we're going to put all of these profile suffixes. So we've got basically side and feature. So left, and you can, you can just read what these are here, but these are common variables that you might need to edit. The vast majority of them are related to daylighting. We daylight all the way from subgrade shoulder slope or end of your proposed pavement, if you will, out to daylight. So we can do one wink to many winks. Uh, the one that is uh, not in there is, well, that isn't related to our daylighting is shoulder floor slope. If I could find it in my list here. So shoulder floor slope, shoulder, shoulder floor slope. From the SCD, one of the things that can be done is you can uh, tighten up your shoulder floor slope from the top from a recoverable to a non-recoverable slope, basically. If you don't know what daylight profile control can do for you, I would just recommend building these right off the get-go. You can target them and see if you use them. If you never use them, they just turn into basically input parameters instead of target parameters. But I really like having them there existing and uh, ready to use. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna, with was that default selected, I'm gonna click create. It's going to give me a check one more time. So if I wanted to turn anything off here, or if I wanted to change any of these default values, I can do it right here. I'm really good with all of these. You know, some of these like final slope, maybe you want to change that. I don't know. We're going to, we're going to keep this as is right now and continue. Chunk, a chunk, a chunk. And Kerblamo, I'm going to close this. As you can see, I've got all these control profiles now that I can use for targeting. Let's save the file, set that aside. Let's get some assemblies built. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to get close to my bridge, but I'm going to get out of my existing surface area here. I'm going to go to my uh, WizDot Design, Design Palettes, WizDot Subassemblies, and I'm going to look for BeamGuard Assemblies tab. 
So we've got two default assemblies here. We've got a rehab and we've got a full reconstruct. So I'm going, I'm going to list these out. I'm going to put the, the beginning station ones on the bottom and I'm going to work my way up. So I'm going to place my assemblies here and I'm going to start with my rehab. So I'm going to do that again. Okay. I'm going to put one in for the left side before the curb and gutter. I'm going to put, oh, and, and I'm going to copy this one so that I, I keep some of my edits. So I'm going to hit escape. Now, the reason why I'm going to break this one up uh, is, oh, I've got to go back over here. So I've got, I've got, these are going to be outside only, and they don't line up where they start up because we've got a little bit of an angle. So these are not exactly at the same starting locations. So because of that, when, when you get into the corridor, it's, you can only have one region per baseline per station range. So I'm going to run a left side only region, and then I'm going to add this alignment a second time into a different baseline so that I can overlap on my station ranges here. Okay, so let's get back to this one. I'm going to select this and I'm going to call this my 25-DG-Rehab-L and no CG. Okay, so let's go to a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the assembly properties and I'm going to change my code set to show my point codes so that I know what I'm going to be building for my surfaces and my cross sections. And then I'm going to go check out the construction. So link on offset onto surface. So this is going to go out some width, the lane width or wherever we're going to start at work and hit our existing surface. Then we've got a little link to get out from there. It's just one that we need. We've got a paved shoulder and an unpaved shoulder. So the paved shoulder we're building with a lane and the unpaved shoulder we're building with a shoulder. And the reason why we do that is because our normal shoulder only has the capability of doing two top slopes. We've got a paved shoulder slope and an unpaved shoulder slope. Well, in being our eat areas, we end up with the possibility of having three slopes. So we can have a paved shoulder and then we can have an unpaved shoulder out to this line. And then we can have a 10 to one or flatter than that beyond here. So you end up with uh, a possible 2% and then a 4% and a 10%. Now, if you don't need to make it more steep, if you don't need to go to that 10%, by all means, run 4% across the whole thing and build it. It'll be a tiny bit wider, but it'll be a whole lot easier to build. But what I'm going to do is show you the edits uh, to do that 10 to 1. Okay, so let's uh, do a couple of edits here. So always check your pavement depth. It's always going to be different than whatever the defaults are. Um, I'm going to leave four and a half, but I'm going to change my base thickness to a nine inch. And these all should be just fine. Super is going to be used outside lane super. That's, that's okay for paved shoulder. For the unpaved shoulder, uh, we're inheriting our thickness from that other one. So if I hit apply, it's matching up now. So for my paved shoulder here, I'm going to, for my paved shoulder, I'm going to use my outside shoulder SE. And then for my unpaved, I'm going to do a user defined. So for unpaved, I'm going to go with a negative 10%. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do on the right side. I'll repeat it on the left side. So 9%, 9 inch, excuse me. And then for unpaved, we're doing outside shoulder. And then we're doing user defined. Again, this is not required. I'm just kind of showing you the maximum for edits here. And the rest look okay. So I'm going to hit apply so that those take. So, okay, we've got a couple of conditionals here. One is for this grading line. So if we go back to our SDD, we've got this grade line. That's, that's what we, the, the blocks built alignments for us here. Essentially what this is saying is, you know, we're, we're trying to get from We've got some kind of recoverable slope out to clear zone here, and we're, we're trying to transition to, we've got non-recoverable, assumedly right behind our beam guard. So what this is saying is we've got, to re, we've got to retain recoverable slope in this area for, you know, possible runoff the roads, but in this area, we could go non-recoverable. It can be trend, it can vary, it can do whatever you want, but it does not have to be recoverable slope. So that's what this, the assembly is doing here is if it finds a grading line, it's going to go out to that grading line and insert a grading line slope, whatever we set it to. And then it's going to go ahead and go with daylighting. 
if it doesn't find it, it's just going to go straight to daylight. And our daylighting sub goes from end of pavement structure, sub bridge shoulder point, what have you, out to daylight. So it can be one link, two links, many links. So that's what these conditionals are doing. And then the last one we have is we've got a conditional for bean guard. So this sub can go through areas where there isn't bean guard and those where there is. And it's just going to, when it finds a bean guard alignment, it's going to draw a little bean guard block at that location if we target it all correctly. So that's the full explanation of what this thing is doing. There's one more thing I gotta point out. On the unpaved shoulder, one of the things that we've got with our shoulder is the to, to do the possibility for a top only, top dressing type of work, we, we make these widening points. I'm gonna pull up the, the, the sub help for that. If I take a look at the coding diagram, maybe the description will be, something's gotta help me here. We've got the possibility for these widening points. Here we go. So that so we've got to build the structure for an entire shoulder. But if you're doing top only, you should say yes to the widening points and just use those for your surface definition. If you're doing a shoulder wipeout, you should not use the widening points and you know make sure you've got point codes for you know that cutout. So that's what we're going to do different between the left and the right side here. So the, on the right side, we're going to make sure we're using the widening points, and on the left side, we are not. So I'm going to go back into the assembly properties and go to construction. So right side, unpaved shoulder, scroll down and include surface widening. I'm gonna say, yes. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I got my thicknesses. Yep, make sure I got my slopes, use it fine, yeah, yeah. Okay, and for this side, I am going to not want the surface widenings on the left. However, one of the things is I do need this point coded. We've got it turned off so that it's a little easier for a top dressing only, but I, I do wanna do a shoulder uh, wipeout on this one. So I, I've got to code this point. So if I go back to, so that's a lane sub assembly. If I go and take a look at this thing, I'm going to scroll down to the coding diagram. Looks like something in these P9, 10, 11, 12 range. If I scroll down here, okay, subgrade is P9 and 10. So it's, you know, for a lane, it's usually ETW sub or Chrome sub. If I look here, I can see this point's getting coded with something. So if I scroll down to nine and 10, make sure I'm on the left side. Yep. Am I on the right? Unpaved shoulder. I want paved shoulder left. There we go. Okay, data. There it is. So that one's getting coded no display. I want to code this one with ETW underbar sub. Nice standard point code to build that point. Hit apply. There we go. So now I've got for the left side all the points that I need. Okay. So now I'm going to make copies of this to basically make it faster. I've got all my standard uh, build outs, my depths already built in. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to select the assembly only, and I'm going to do a CO for copy. And I'm going to start here and I'll F8. I like them all nice and lined up. Click it up here. I'm going to do that one more time. Click it up there. Escape. All right. So this one is going to be uh, left side with CG. And this one is going to be right side. I'm not dealing with CG no uh, CG no CG, so I'm just going to leave it at right side. Okay. So I'm going to select all those subs, delete them. And I'm going to select all of these subs. Delete them. I'm going to get my uh, curb and gutter in there. So I'm going to go to my roadway tab and pick my CG basic. I'm going to do a left insertion. So I'm going to use a 36 inch curb and I'm going to use a TBT. Yeah. Cause that's what from the curb and gutter, this is the, this is the curb that we're using uh, for these thriving transition areas. So I'm going to type R to replace my rural shoulder. So what this is going to do is it's going to throw in the curb and gutter, and then it's going to retain the construction chain following uh, the daylights after it. So I'm going to pick that one, and I'm going to call the CG basic dash L because it's on the left side. Okay. Awesome. So now I've got, if I check, if I hit escape and check my assembly construction, select the assembly, assembly properties, construction, Pave shoulder, CG basic, all good. You always want to make sure that this logic chain keeps intact. 
One thing I forgot to edit is I want the, the slope to go down. By default, it's the, the, the back slope is going up. I don't want that. So I'm going to select this sub, only that sub, go to the sub properties, I'm going to check my terrace, ba -ba, ba -ba -ba, terrace slope, not positive 4%, negative 4%. Apply it, drops down, excellent. I'm going to do, okay, three foot terrace width. We'll go with that. Fine, fine. Okay, now I'm going to throw in the lane extension to get some get some gravel underneath this. So I'm going to pick my lane and go to the subassembly properties and my subgrade. I'm looking for a width here. Outside base extension, width. Okay, so I want to do two feet beyond this. So I'm going to go to three feet plus two, so five feet. So I'm going to extend five feet. Apply. There we go. So now we've got you know enough base to actually pour this uh, curb and gutter, and we've got a little terrace behind it, and then we'll get going on to daylighting after that. Just fine. Save that. And the right side is built. Okay, so this will take me through a lot. This will take me through this area, and then this area on the left, and this whole area on the right. Now we got to do this one up here. So we're going to do a full section for that. So let's go pick the bean guard. A full beam guard and yes thank you very much i don't want to look at you anymore specify location yep drag it up in this area okay so there's my full section and i'm going to pick it and call it 25-bg dash reconstruct something like that all right all right, we got bean guard. We got all that set. Let's uh, save a file and drag. Oh, shoot! Drag them up. And then I'm also going to do a view, new view, and this I'm going to call this my top dash assemblies. Current display. Don't just save a layer snapshot. Visual style. Current is fine. Okay. So now I get a little uh, custom model view, so I can always go back to this quickly and easily. All right, one last sub edit that I almost forgot, uh, but did not. Forgot to edit this out too, but let's do that. So this is a right left side only, so we're getting rid of that. On these subs, I'm going to just do a, I wonder if I can do these all at once. I'll select all of these subs. And they vary, of course they do, because some of them are top and some of them are bottom. So let's see if I can pick all the top ones. They should all have the same name. Okay. Subassembly properties? Uh, no. Got to do them onesie onesie. So the, the switch that I want to do on daylight profile control is the set min offset greater than or equal to clear zone. I want to turn that to no. That's a really handy one for if you're doing like new construction or even reconstruction grading, and you absolutely want to get out to a certain offset. Uh, but what I want to do with these is just, just give me slopes. So I'm going to set these to no. Let's label these guys. Was that design tab assembly label one, A for all. Hmm, didn't go. Oh, I wonder if I've got weird, uh, got some layers frozen or something. Let's uh, turn them all on. Here we go. That's better. Okay, so now we've got them labeled. Sorry about that. Let's get some modeling done here. So we've got control profiles, we've got assemblies. We've got, I think, everything we need. So let's get going on this. So I'm going to start off on this left side. Assembly and bring it all the way up to the beginning of our curve gutter here. So let's create a corridor. Home, create design panel, corridor drop down. I'm going to name this 25 uh, BG, 25 beam guard. Alignment profile baseline, 25 alignment, 25 prop. We are going to use the 25 beam guard rehab left, no curve and gutter. And we're going to target exist. Yes, we're going to set baseline and region parameters. And Let's have adder. So a start station. It's gonna be started with our taper down here. Boom. End station. 
Boom. Frequency I'm going to set. So since this is, we'll call this a beam guard only, I, I really don't want 50s or 100s cut. So I'm going to max this out at 1 million. Or even more than that, maybe. I don't know. But I'm going to do it a lot because I'm just going to let the corridor figure out where it needs to be. So at offset target and adjacent target, those should hit my key hosts 1, 5, and 9 in the beginning of the paper. And I will definitely verify that that happens. So along the same baseline, I'm going to do the opposite side. I'm going to do the region for the full. So oh, I could, I could, I could do the CG too. I should not get ahead of myself. So let's add a region and we'll use the CG. Okay. And that's going to go begin a curve and gutter to end the curve and gutter. And I'm going to use that 1 million or 10 million or whatever it is. It's a ton. Okay. And then we're going to add one more region to this baseline. And that's going to be the reconstruct. And for that, we're going to set the start to be at the beginning of the. I'm going to start. Oh, wrong side. I'm going to start right at the end of the bridge here. Boom. Okay, and we're going to end it. So we're going to end past the end of both tapers. Let's see what we got for like a full station out here. I'm too tiny to see, but I can see in the hover, 477 will get me past the very end. Let's go out to 448. So 448, zero, zero, enter. And that's that. Blah. Out here, my frequency is going to be hundreds. There's a rural section. I want to do at least 100s. And it's going to more critically catch all of the. We've got a ton of offset geometry. So this 100, and we're in super and all kinds of stuff. So this is just throwing in for default. Um, I don't think we're going to have any problems getting uh, sections here. Now I'm going to do that right side. And like I said before, this has got to be with a new baseline. So we're going to add a baseline, but we're going to pick the same 25 and select the 25 prop. Okay. But it's a different baseline. So I can overlap this start and end station with my right side. So I'll add that region and pick the right side rehab and uh, go down to the region and give it the right start and end stations. So there's our start. And we're going to end this uh, up at the end, at the beginning of the bridge. Okay. So we've got a corridor. <sighs> I'm not touching any targets. Okay. I'm going to do that with another tool that I have. So I'm just going to okay this and rebuild the corridor. <clears throat> now, there's nothing set to target. We've got all kinds of wackadoodles. Nothing's going out to anything. We've got some edits to do here. I'm going to go to WizDat Design tab, and under the Design Panel Corridor, I'm going to assign corridor targets. So I'm going to one corridor. That's easy. I'm going to choose my top first baseline, first region, and I'm going to use one of these templates. Guess what I'm going to use? I'm going to use the corridor target assigned beam guard. I can open that template and take a look at it. And what this is going to do is that while cards, uh, all of our common targets, not only for surfaces, so we've got daylight surfaces, target surfaces, we've got target offsets here, and we've got, for the daylight profile control, a lot of target offsets, lane widths, so we've got our edge of traveled ways and edge of pave shoulder, all that good stuff. This is going to do an exact matchup with subname and wildcard uh, object names like this. So that's what we're going to use. If you've done any, you can use it right out of the default areas. So the default locations are in a little, on the left side here, you can see AutoCAD application assemblies. Um, this is where the default is. If there's any changes that you need to make, uh, you can't make them here. You got to copy it to your uh, file location, which I'm going to do here just in case I need to. So I'm going to go into assemblies and I'm going to right click, uh, copy that. I'm going to go back a folder and drop it in, right click and paste. So now I've got my own project. One, if I got to do a different assembly or whatever, I can, I can use this for uh, automating my targeting. So I picked it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to rebuild until the last one. So I'm going to use the assign. I don't need to retain targets because there's not much done yet. So we're going to uh, run this. 
Um, okay, process complete. I'm going to go up to my next one. Okay, process complete. Last one. Okay, process complete. I'm going to switch over to my baseline, do that right side one, use the same one, and I'm going to rebuild corridor on this one. Modeling, modeling, modeling. Bam, the lines changed. Now, we just did a ton of targeting with set corridor targets. Let me show you. I'm going to go to my corridor. Obviously, it's here. It's all rebuilt because I told it to. I'm going to go to properties. If I go into parameters, any one of these, I take a look at my targeting. For any one of these, you can see all kinds of offsets, elevations, check my surface targets. They're all set to exist. So that wild carding lets us, you know, so we've got Condition found, target beam guard left. Uh, it looks like I found some beam guard. Uh, grading line. Uh, there's a grading line there. So all kinds of good targeting done in like a couple of seconds here. All right. Now you shouldn't think about this. It's possible that this will do all of your targeting, you know, automatically for you. Hooray. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't always assume that that's how it's going to go. It's, it's, you know, maybe it does 80%, maybe it does 90%, maybe it does 100%. But this is really about doing a lot of the work, and you might need to do some uh, tweaking afterwards. But it looks like it did start out at uh, the edge of Traveled Way. It found that. It went all the way out, and it did some, looks like it's doing something in that grading line area. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so we've got a corridor. Now, I'm going to do something here so that I can see what these surfaces are going to look like. I'm, I'm, I'm certain that these surfaces are not how I want them to be. But I'm going to start building my surfaces right away so that I can keep an eye on those while I'm doing my edits here. So right after that, I'm going to do create corridor surfaces. And we're going to, I can view the default here. This is going to have all of our kind of like normal slash standard codes that you would find for building your datum surface and for your top surface. And you can see them right here. So it's going to corridor, uh, give the corridor name and top and datum, give it a style. And here are the features. Okay, so as long as I'm sticking in with regular, normal point codes, I should be good to go. But again, this is a 80, 90, 100% thing. It might need to be changed a little bit, but it's just a lot faster if we start with this from the get-go. So I'm going to A for apply default, select my corridor, rebuild, you betcha. And let me look. Okay, I've got corridor surfaces. That's pretty cool. Now, let's go take a look at these in 3D. Why not? I'm going to uh, turn on, well, I'm going to, for my, if I take a view and go to Navigate 2D Constrained Orbit, and if I'm really good about picking my points here, I'm going to pick on one of these, I'm going to pick on a feature line here. If I can get the green little ball. Yep. Give her a rotate. Take a look. Exit that. Let's do a conceptual view here. I don't see much for surfaces, do you? What did I do wrong? Oh, maybe I grabbed down at uh, elevation zero. That's always fun. There's my surfaces. Hooray! So I'm going to be very patient while my computer thinks about all the things I'm asking it to do all at the same time. And I'm going to zoom into it. What I'm trying to show you here is, as you can see, I don't have, it's not shrink wrapped yet. <clears throat> I'm going to do that very soon too. Uh, let's see if I can do a zoom into this and we'll click it and tick it. Nice. That's what I wanted. Okay. So I'm going to do a custom shrink wrap tool so that, because I've got three kind of work islands here, normal civil 3D tools, you would, you would need to do a lot of manual wrapping around or do multiple corridors just to get this done. I'm going to go back to Design design panel corridor and use a shrink wrap corridor surface. Now this is going to shrink wrap around each one of our regions. So I'm going to go to the top so that it's a lot easier to see. I'm going to select my surface definition, OK. And that wrapped me pretty tight. Let's see if datum works as well. Select my de definition. Looking good. So this is a lot closer to what I want for a corridor. It's not looking too bad. It looks like we're bumping out um, for the eats. And it's going well. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to save this view too, because I might be able, I might want to come back to this. So I'm going to go to this little guy here and pull up my view manager and do a new view and not save the layer snapshot. And I'm going to call this 3D. So I know it's a 3D shot. Uh, bridge. Okay. 
visual style. I always want to go to conceptual with this one. That's all fine. Okay. Okie doke. Let's go back to, now that I've got these layers built for my surfaces, I'm going to go back to the top view. And I'm going to want to bounce around in um, corridor section editor. So I'm going to create a custom view here too. I got to get out of conceptual so the goes super fast. Tool do wireframe. And zoom in. I'm going to do was that design view, rotate view, and snap to my bridge. Turn my ortho off, apparently. Bang. That's about right where I want that. So I'm going to save this as my uh, new. This is going to be top dash bridge. Don't save the layer snapshot, visual style. I always want to go to the wireframe one up here. Okay, so I've got surfaces, I've got corridor, things are getting built. So let's take a look at our plan view. We've got three different islands of work. We've got left, right, and uh, full reconstruct. There's a ton of lines going on in here. This does not surprise me at all. We are in super. We are have all the posts and transitions to get through the beam guard. This is just how it's going to be. Do you need to cut this many cross sections? No, but remember, any time that you've got a begin or end of transition of your sections, so beginnings of tapers, what have you, you should have uh, you should have some you should have a cross section there. So just because the minimum requirement is post one five and nine and begin the taper does not mean that is all the cross section that you need to define the work. So let's take a look at some more sections here. I'm just going to walk through one of the things you'll see. So this is on the low side of the curve. We've got that ten to one, and we're building uh, the beam guard out at that uh, beam guard line. On the top side, this is definitely not a ten to one. What's what's happening here is we're at like a four and a half percent on super, and this is. Uh, hitting max rollover. So this is a, a break of no more than 7% on the top side. Now you could say, well, but it should be 10 to 1 because it's behind a uh, beam guard. But remember, this is a short beam guard run here. We've got, uh, we're going out to here, and then this area is is not protected by any beam guard. So I, you know, you should not be breaking that at a 10 to 1 or else you'd have to, you'd have to do some kind of transition where you know, you, you get to this by, you know, an area in the grading line, and it it's just not worth the, the hassle. You just, I just wanted to show that up on the high side, you got to remember to keep in line with the rollover max. Okay, let's go take a look at another area. Let's go look at, see how that uh, curving gutter section is doing for us. I'm going to select my station here. This looks like a good one. Okay, my words are way too big, but I can, uh, I can see it's doing pretty good. So let's go, I'm going to go with that design. Uh, not assembly. There we go. Assembly label sizes. I'm gonna, this kind of steps through a couple of, of different sizes, and I'm going to shrink them up. So this is not quite right. So it looks like the beam. Okay, so the gutter is my three lines here. It looks like the the beam guard is going in the right place, but the 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 curving gutter is is not. And what's happening is this is an odd. What I needed to do, the, the, the gutter is hanging off of this lane, but I didn't tell the lane to go out to the gutter. I just told it to go to the to go to the edge of traveled way with. So it stops, it's it's not going to the right location, essentially. So let's change that targeting in there. We'll open the, the corridor properties. And this is the left curb gutter. And roll over to my targeting. I'm gonna check that. And I wanna do where's my lane? Paved shoulder, this is it. So for my lane width, it's looking for edge of paved shoulder and the beam guard, but we don't want that. So I'm gonna turn that off and I want it to go for CG. If I didn't know where the CG was, I could do a star CG star and I'd find it. So left, I don't want the back and the face. I want those, that's what I want, select it. And now my lane will go to that width and then the curb and gutter would build properly after it. Okay, rebuild the corridor. And you saw the little jump there, and now look, my, my curb and gutter is meeting there. My uh, beam guard is where it should be, and it's going behind there, just exactly how I would want it to be. Okay. So I'm going to save my file here, and I am going to 
do a couple more edits. Let's go back to our standard detail. And I'm thinking about the eat areas. So what we've got here at the post, I never get these, right? Which one of this? Oh, that's nine. This must be one. Uh, oh, excuse me, post nine. At post nine, let's look at our section. We're in the C section here. Transition to taper line. Basically, you know, as long as you're past here, this is where we can begin our transition from the recoverable slope to non-recoverable slopes. Now, I want to point out that this is the non-recoverable slopes start from the top of the shoulder. So we're going to transition from top of shoulder down and, and suck in our slope intercepts as much as we can. So this is our post nine area here. Let's make sure our cross sections in this area are looking good. Go back a place. Okay. I'm not going to be worrying a whole bunch about um, whether my side slopes are right. That's not my intent in this exercise. I'll, I'll point you to something in a little bit to help you with that. But I just want to make sure that if I take a look, now something's screwy getting built there. This might be a transition between, yeah, this is a transition between one to the other. So I might need to add a, oh, I know what I can do. I got to I gotta speak in my curb and gutter. I'm going to drop my curb head in this area so that I've got uh, no curb head at the very end here. I'm going to do that with a control profile, one that I haven't built yet because it's not set up for uh, curb and gutter, but it's easy to add. So I'm going to go to the that design tab, design panel profile, pull down control profile editor, and I'm going to create 25. And this is a left side. And I'm going to say curb head, uh, curb height. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to give it a start station of my uh, little curb and gutter here and end at the end of the curb and gutter. And I'm going to give it a 0 0.5 for value. It's going to be default six, uh, oh, four inch. I, I do four divided by 12. Um, okay, fine. <laughs> Zero, uh, 0 0.333. Okay, create it. Profile created. Hooray. Now I'm going to edit it. So what I want to do is not that one, left curb height. And I want to make, I'm going to make a six foot, I'm going to make a 10 foot uh, transition from zero to 0 0.333. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do some math in my head. So 10 feet uh, up or down station of this would be at 443.05.71. That's going to be a 0 0.333. I'm going to add it. And then what I'm going to do is bring this one, this is the beginning, this is where I want it to zero out, and give that a zero. And everything looks updated and good. That's great. I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to, so at this, at this station, I should see this curb head flatten out once I rebuild my corridor. Oh, I haven't targeted yet, silly me. Okay, so let's do that. Right click properties, and I got to go left curb and gutter over to my targeting, curb and gutter basic, curb height from profile, name, star, uh, curb, star, enter, there it is, select it, okay, okay, rebuild, and it flattened out. I've still got some wacky triangles going on, but at least it's it's a lot smoother than it was before. So if I go and check that out in 3D view, down in here, here's that curb head getting zeroed out and then bringing up and the back slopes doing the things that they're supposed to do. Nice, okay. Let's go back to our top view. So this is looking pretty good. Obviously, we need to get that uh, surface figured out. I'm not going to bother with it right now, but we've got those sections looking good. We've got those other sections looking good. The last thing I'm going to do is uh, an edit for the control profile, bringing that uh, shoulder uh, from, from the last post here to here, and then bringing it through so that the, the, the shoulder force slope uh, goes from a four to one to a two and a half to one. 
So I'm actually going to start that on the start that on the right side here. I'm going to go to my was not designed design panel profile control profile editor. I'm going to in the edit tab. I'm going to go to the right side shoulder four slope. There it is. Of course, it's the last one. I'm going to pick it. Default values four to one. That's why it's doing four to one. So I'm going to pick a station and I'm going to pick the uh, post nine station right there. And I'm going to give it an ending value of 0 0.25. That's where my four to one is going to finish. And uh, negative, I guess. Okay. Now I'm going to go 50 feet down the road. I happen to know, well, let's, let's, let's transition all the way to the face of the, let's say the face of the bridge. We want to be at a four to one. So that's that stationing. And this is going to be a negative four. And if I give this a colon here, it's going to calc out the decimal for me. So that's cool. Uh, not a four to one, negative 2.5 colon to one, negative 0 0.4. Excellent. Okay. Now I'm going to pull this through to the other side. So I'm going to do a station pick and go to the other side of my bridge. Uh, this one's all the way back here. So I'm going to do it there. Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the four to one up to this post and add that. That's still negative two point negative two and a half to one. And then where I want it to be a four to one is that post. So that'll be a negative four colon add that. So this is how a lot of control profile editing looks as you bring it up to the default value. There's a transition that transition goes for however long it goes and then it goes back up. So that's good. Let's close this. And let's take a look at those edits after we've rebuilt the corridor. So I'm going to go to the section editor, select my other baseline, go to my region station. So now I'm on the right side. Let's see where my line is. I don't want to be way back there. I want to look up at this interesting stuff up in here. So let's go pick uh, there. Okay, so we've got the uh, shoulder break already happening. We're into transition and super. Here's our four to one slope. Let's walk through some station, shall we? Still four to one. There is a steepening up and this is a four to one. So then I know this is, this is steeper, steeper, steeper. And then it's bringing it all the way in. Now let's say I wanted to do the same transition on this slope. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details on how daylight profile control works. There's a topic called daylight profile control workshop that you should check out. Uh, for that, but I'm gonna, I know this is the recoverable slope, but I, because I'm within my clear zone area, but I'm going to set this to transition as well so that it matches that shoulder four slope. I could set it to the shoulder four slope, um, but in case I want to change it, I'm going to, I'm going to work with the recoverable slope uh, value. So we're going to go back to the profile editor and pick my right side rec recoverable four slope and same kind of deal. I'm going to pick my last station. That I want it to be four to one. That's going to be right there. And that's going to be a 0 0.25. Add it. Go pick the end of the bridge or the last post. And that's going to be a 0 0.4 for a two and a half to one. And same deal, pull it through. I guess I did end a bridge before, didn't I? Okay. And last one, right here. And that's going to be a 0 0.25. Add it. Okay. And close that, rebuild. And we should see this fill slope match exactly with that. So we got some, we got to clear up, clean up the, uh, the shrink wrap to get that to look uh, perfect. But as you can see, uh, that slope is matching up. If I go through my sections back up, it keeps spinning out. So that's the key transition, you know, to get from recoverable slopes to non-recoverable slopes. We've got a ton of edits happening in here. We've got a ton of transitions happening in here and it's doing it all correctly. Now, obviously you got to know your, your, your site specific location to know how to put together, you know, what kind of fill slopes you need to be, but, um, you know, we're making a lot of changes happening with very few edits, very few regions and assemblies, and we're getting a lot of work done and a lot of changes done in those, in those regions. So that's why we built these tools. That's why you should use them.
give it one more wrap, clean things up, and give the file a save. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you saw some stuff that was interesting, new, or enlightening for you. If you want to see the entire workflow that starts from just the stationed alignment, developing your horizontal geometry, all the way through to refinement surfaces, please check out the uh, beam guard modeling topic on the KB. With that, let's take some questions.